I would like to think it was my skill, my driving skills, but uh, 2016 Chevy Silverado with 73,000 miles on one set of brakes. That's pretty good. Now let me explain. I can't take all the credit. I believe it's the Chevy Silverado, uh, and I'm sure other trucks have this as well. The tow haul mode, when you engage it and you tap the brakes, it'll actually downshift through the uh, gears and slow you down. And then I would apply some brakes and stuff. So I would give that system the credit, I think. I would like to, you know, think it's all me, you know, my driving skill. I'm the one of the lucky few that it actually works, that system works. And I've heard some people having some issues with it, but for me, it has always worked. Even when I'm not towing or hauling a heavy load, I would engage it and just tap the brakes and it just, just does its thing and downshifts for me, which was really, really nice. So 73,000 miles, that's pretty good. Let's get into the video. Okay, if you haven't seen that movie, that is an excellent movie. My son and I just watched that a couple weekends ago, and it just made me think, you know, for all the manufacturers that have cars or trucks in some type of racing, and the things that they learn, the technology that they put into stuff, to me, that's pretty cool. It's really, really, really cool. So, yeah, 73,000 miles on a 2016 Chevy Silverado, and I'm one of the lucky few with the tow haul mode still working. I know there's some guys out there that's had some issues, but uh, before we jump into the video any further, check it out. Uh, this is the outside, and this is the inside. For those that don't know, right here, there's some metal, and on the outside one, there's no metal. So the way I do my brakes, some people may disagree with it. Uh, reason being is I am forcing fluid back through the ABS module. And usually that's no good. The correct way to do it would be to get a one-man brake bleeder kit and then put it on there and break your Zerk free. So when you squeeze your caliper pistons back together, you're pushing the fluid into the little bottle that has brake fluid in it just a little bit. And then you can lock it off so you don't get air in the system that is the correct way to do it but over the years i found the way i'm going to do it is it works really well just go slow you don't need to squish this down in a hurry uh slower the better and uh you won't ha you shouldn't have any problems but don't just do it the right way go get the one man brake bleeder and it works well i've done it both ways to me this is just the fastest way so what i do is uh Remove the lug nuts off the wheel, and sometimes that can be a challenge if you only have a tire iron. I've been using the uh, Milwaukee Impact. Well, it's the wrench. It's a half inch, and it's worked well for me on the trailer and truck and everything else. It's got 650 foot-pounds of torque. Be careful. You can break those wheel studs on trucks and cars. I've done it. It's not fun to replace all that. So just be careful with any impact. Once you get your wheel off, I take a screwdriver and I go down in between the brakes and the rotor and uh, I kind of push in there a little bit to expand. I'm already pushing on the, the, uh, the brake cylinders right there and I just get a little room so when I take out the bottom bolt, I could actually just rotate up the, uh, the brake caliper. I don't actually remove the caliper from the truck. I used to take it off and hang it on the, the strut or wherever but I just found to save some time, you know, just loosen up the bolts. And you can actually test to see if that guide rod on there on the caliper is smooth. If it isn't, take it off, clean them out, clean them up, uh, put a little new grease in there, put some grease in there. That way those rods, they remove them. You know, that way the caliper can do its thing when you hit the brake and everything. Roll it up, remove the brake pads, remove the clips. Uh, this is 73,000 miles from factory here. This is a clip that goes down into uh, the actual seat for the brakes to sit in. I do not use any oil. No oil. I do not use any grease is what I meant to say. I don't put any grease on the back side of the, uh, the brake pad or on the tips here. 
Uh, if I used anything, it would be more of a dry graphite spray. Other than that, the conditions that I live in with all the dust and dirt, grease just attracts everything and you'll have some more issues than it's worth. Uh, I put them in kind of dry and uh, it works out well. Just as long as when you put them in, you can kind of feel it. It's, uh, let me put it in correctly here. When you put them in, it's not getting caught up on anything, but you can hear it right there. It works well. It works. Trust me. You don't have to put all that grease crap in there. That's going to attract junk dirt and cause more issues down the road. But, uh, Hope that helps, and when you put everything back on, just reverse the process, and uh, you're good to go. Now, the torque specs, you know, you should look them up before you actually attempt to do all this, because it is your brakes, and you don't want to crash into anybody or hurt anybody. But on mine, I believe the uh, caliper bolts is around 73 foot-pounds, and uh, that's the important there. And then the lug nuts is around 125. Uh, I've always done for my truck and I've had never had any issues. I'm Robert with Oakwood. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and to all the new subscribers, welcome. Stick around. Hopefully we're gonna get some more videos out here soon and get some giveaways going on. And I uh, hope everybody's doing well uh, with everything going on in the world. And that's kind of why I wanna talk about doing your own brakes. Yeah, in the video, you can, can see that I busted my knuckle pretty good. I don't mind it, you know, it's, it does happen. But I enjoy turning wrenches and busting knuckles. I should have been wearing gloves. Uh, I'm Robert with Oakwood. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Peace.